no help from us. Sorry to Hello, say. I'm Jonathan Bogues of Darkling Room. I'm going to be I'm playing a few that. cases from Incubus, my new ghost hunting deduction game. Jen and Bear have literally just finished their introduction, leaving us alone. I'd always suggest this is a perfect time before you start your investigations to familiar yourselves with the gadgets. So we've got the spirit box here. That's very much based on my real one. There we go. Got an EMF meter. Thermal cam, night vision camera, and the bag just puts any gadgets away that you may be holding at the time. We're gonna start with the still camera and cheat a little bit and look to see what the OPG have for us for clues of rooms. So front yard, living area, dining room. Oh, that's good, or ground floor. Front yard, living area, dining room. So then, if we bring up our map, you can see that's these areas here. Front yard, living area, dining room. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the EMF. The EMF meter is a good one because it will basically indicate straight off if there's anything paranormal about. Depending on the number of uh, lights that light up will also help you work out which kind of ghost it is. Right, so front yard, up level two. hear anything specifically, apart from the EMF. Ah, there we go. Definite tap on the window, Danvers. So we then select the correct ghost, which we think we're gonna put in the front yard by looking at these icons here on the left-hand side. You can right-click these icons to get more information about which one is which. So we're looking for this one, a tapper in the front yard. The OPG are going to be so pleased with us. So our next ghost, we think, was in the living room. Let's swap to a different gadget and have a look around. This one is the night vision camera. This will show us things that we may not see with the naked eye. Also the dining room while we're here. Right, in this instance, you're looking out for orbs. You can actually zoom the view with the middle mouse button down so you can get a larger view. I don't see any orbs, which is a shame, because I would have loved to have said my Nigel Danvers iron. Definitely not an orb. So let's try a thermal camera, which is my favorite one, actually, because, ah, there we go, straight off. There is a handprint. Ah, there's more. Ooh. Creepy. Right, so that means back to the map. I'm going to be finding our toucher ghost. That's that one for the dining room. So our only puzzle at this point is which one is haunting? Ah, it's also a th thermal evidence. So we've got a phantom fire in the fireplace. So that is our final evidence for this round, which will be a flamer ghost. Ray. They get a bit more um, nasty later on in the game. So we're gonna request our confirmation from the OPG. Hopefully they will be absolutely thrilled with us. Yay. Excellent work, top marks. So we then finish our investigation. We've been looking over your work, so successfully identified tapper ghosts one of my favorites it's like they just want to be invited in but no. don't a flamer mm -hmm. right we could be in danger unexpected fires are common especially in old the flamer is actually based on something that happened in the house the real house that i've not. investigated which like was it would suffer Whatever from basically just plugs burning out iphone cables Things you can put down as being reasonably normally explained. It's just the number of times it happened and now to how many people it's happened to because we've um, seen three lots of owners come and go at this said one house. 
Right, here we are, our nighttime investigation. Day two, well, night two, no, night one, sorry. Investigation. So, that'll give us another quick intro about the yeah, dangers and creepiness of nighttime investigations. Job, but watch out tonight. This you can keep walking at this point video. as you go, Hi. which, Is you know, there's no traffic, so I think you should be fine with that. So then you'll have the same experience as the daytime investigation, just a bit creepier. Yeah, Some supernatural paranormal phenomena yeah, only occurs during the nighttime level, so basically just keep that in mind. Specifically dark forms and apparitions. You can only take so many frights on a vigil before you'll need to take it's a good idea to check the cameras as well because these will actually show you if there's any phenomena occurring in those rooms. Are you trying to scare them? Including the yeah, external you feel cameras. funky, get out of that room. We don't want to come and find you passed out on a tiled floor. Uh, Doesn't look like worse. anything yet. Good luck. Stay safe. Get some evidence that you can get out of there. Gotta go. Yeah, uh, me too. Duty calls. Chat tomorrow. Right. And they're gone. Alone again at last. So uh, we're going to do the usual cheat because obviously... We haven't got, all got time to do a proper exp uh, proper examination. So kitchen, living area, and whole house. Wow, okay, so that means there's something occurring already. Having a look around with the thermal. Don't see any handprints. No phantom fire. Or flame, sorry. Ah, wall scroll. Ooh, is that a snake? So that's our first phenomena. We have wall scroll, which is this one, and I'm placing it in the kitchen, which is our location. Let us go forth. Ah, this is a fun one. Phantom furniture. So basically, phantom furniture is anything that's furniture based that shouldn't be there. So that's this one. Phantom fur ghost furniture. Phantom furniture is in the living area. And I've actually. Ooh, what was it? I've already forgotten what the other one was. Kitchen, living room. The whole house, right. So EMF's a good one for that. Oh, a mysterious phone call. Pervert. You should be in the house. Ooh. I get calls like that all the time, to be honest. Ooh. Right, let's try the spirit box. Voice activation. Where are you? Ah. So try different rooms. If the ghost book is active, try it in a couple of rooms to work out if it's the whole house. We already know from the cheat sheet that it is actually, in fact, the whole house. So, what's your name? Did you die here? Kind of. No. Let's try a couple more rooms. Can you see me? Awareness. Awareness. Are you the incubus? Darkness. Darkness. Um. So we now have our third thing, which is a chatter ghost. And we're putting that in this icon down here in the bottom right, which means the whole house. So. Voice activation. Fingers crossed. Wall scroll, factory furniture, chatter goes three out of three. Yes. Great work. Thank you. 
And there you have it, a day and the night investigating the house in Incubus. There are seven days and nights in total. The story progresses as you basically go through each day to a surprising climax. Oh, it's raining. Right, morning. Oh, the weather isn't great, but mm -mm. maybe that will affect your findings in a good way. Oh, maybe. The house itself is mid-Victorian, but it's lost a lot of the period vibe. Hasn't it just? It was once part of a much longer terrace of houses, all connected. Now it stands alone. How come? The others got bombed during the Blitz. That's the Second World War, right? Early 1940s? Yeah, I'm wondering if that's a key moment for this haunting. To find out who lived in the house during the war. I'll send details. Right, this is an interesting point. Do read the files that Jen sends you. She's a very fast researcher, so the files normally arrive within a few moments. There we go. So up here is your inventory. Uh, it's kind of neatly organized. We've got all items, other things that I don't have yet. So here's the document she just sent. Now, this is really interesting because it's actually the census information for the house since it was built. And there's quite a few clues in here as to the plot. Also, if you see any names that you think basically will be um, significant, like this one I'm looking at in the middle right now, uh, it's a good idea maybe to call those out. Spoiler. So. I think that's just about pretty much it. Obviously, it's a good idea to save. Save is that button there. And you can just load from that save. There we go. I think that's about it. I mean, options, I think you've now got a motion blur on and off if you're on an older machine. Also, do make sure you play the lower res version if you're on laptops or older machines, because uh, we basically want as many people to play it as possible. And for a classic adventure game, you know, it really is worth getting that right. So, I give you Incubus, a ghost hunter's tale. Now, what am I supposed to do with that? Isn't it? Did we call the police? Mm. Um, no. Not just yet. Nick really? It's been there a while. That cover was painted over years ago. Check out the other items. Alright. So goodbye for me. I hope you enjoy playing Incubus. If you're playing from our store or from Steam or other digital outlets from next week.